Thank you and hello everyone. My name is Joel Lisenby. I am a climatologist and a drought information coordinator at NIDIS and I will be walking you through a literature review that NIDIS put together for this workshop. This should be a review for most of you who read the written report. Also as a note this presentation is best viewed in full screen mode if you have that capacity. To start out the first mention of flash drought in my literature search in August 1999, R. Shostak authored a piece for EOS Transactions magazine in which prominent physical scientists were interviewed about drought. Shostak points to the slow onset of drought compared to the more dramatic and sudden weather events in states highlighted here. Droughts receive less attention because they are slow moving disasters. There is no such thing as a flash drought, for instance. It was only three and a half years later that the term flash drought began showing up in the published literature. The first mention of the term chronologically showed up in Peters et al. January 2002, a paper on the derivation and utility of the standardized vegetation index SVI. The term showed up again in Svoboda et al. 2002 paper on, US, on the U.S. drought monitor. I would like to note here that Mark Svoboda was a co-author on the Peters paper, so there is a link there. The Peters paper has been referenced twice in relation to the use of the term flash drought. First by Twidwell et al. 2014 in the Journal of Applied Vegetation Sciences, a paper about drought-induced woody plant mortality. And then again by Lee et al. in their 2015 paper in Aeolian Research titled Cause of Wind Erosion in the Dust Bowl. And that's looking at the Southern Great Plains of the North, Ameri North America during the 1930s in which they claim the Dust Bowl may have in initiated as what is now called a flash drought, referencing Peters et al. 2002, that persisted and intensified. The Svoboda paper has been referenced much more with special attention to these four papers, which will be referenced in more detail shortly. The Svoboda paper gave a general description of flash drought shown here on the left. It mentions a heat wave and short-term dryness that leads to a rapid onset of drought with impacts. The four subsequent references from the Svoboda paper each describe flash drought just a little differently. One paper describes it as a short-term drought, while three describe it as a rapid onset drought. One of these papers was a literature review by Otkin et al. 2018. In this paper, Otkin, Otkin took a hard line that flash drought should be distinguished from other drought by its unusually rapid rate of intensification. This paper has been referenced many times, not always by papers describing flash drought as a rapid onset event. Sine et al. 2008, colored green here, is unique among the flash drought references. This was given as a talk at the 22nd Conference on Hydrology on 20th of January 2008 in New Orleans. They said, and I quote, flash drought is considered to be a short term yet severe event ca characterized by moisture deficits and abnormally high temperatures, close quote. I would usually not consider this to be a key reference, but Sine, was, Sine et al. was subsequently referenced by Hunt et al. 2009 and Mosny et al. 2012, which was then referenced by Otkin et al. 2013. In total, 16 papers provided a general description of flash drought. Many of these described flash drought as either a rapid onset drought or a drought that began as a rapid reduction in rainfall or soil moisture. It's up to discussion how these are practically different, but I thought it was worth noting that not all flash drought descriptions straight, jumped straight to the word drought. These are all the flash drought general descriptions that considered flash drought to be a rapid onset event. A minority of general flash drought descriptions considered flash drought to be a short-lived but intense drought event. These were Sine et al. 2008, which I've already mentioned, Hunt et al. 2014, and Zhang et al. 2020. Here I'm showing all references that provide a general description of flash drought. Thin arrows indicate a direct reference that connects the papers, and non-arrowed lines indicate a topical connection. The 2012 drought event caused a spike in flash drought research. Some of these used a new definition or description, but most relied on existing definitions. Eleven papers in our review define flash drought by its rate of onset or intensification that are tied to specific thresholds or various indicators. The first of these was Anderson et al. 2013. 
For sake of time, I will assume that these definitions have been read before today's workshop. Um, and also, before today's workshop, I asked you to provide your professional opinions of these definitions. And I received feedback from many of you, and I will be touching on some of your comments as I go along. For Anderson et al., the pros of this definition that you mentioned are that it uses variables that represent the physical impacts of drought. In this case, it's ET and soil moisture. The standard, uh, by standardizing the anomalies, this allows you to account for seasonal differences. However, the cons, one of the cons that was mentioned, in fact, the only con that was mentioned here, is that changes of greater than 1.5 standard deviation over a four-week period are too steep. Ford and Labosir, 2017, was adopted by three subsequent papers. They defined flash drought as when the soil moisture percentile at a station declines from at or above the 40th percentile to at or below the 20th percentile in four pentads or less. You said this definition was easy to understand and it uses variables that represent the physical impacts of drought. However, it also uses changes in soil moisture to define flash drought and it does not distinguish different intensities of flash drought. This method can be limiting, limiting because the use of percentiles convert a nonlinear distribution to a linear distribution. Park et al. 2018 used three satellite-derived indices to define a flash drought. They, they were heavily reliant on remote-sensed data. You said these indices are not commonly used and are difficult to understand. And the definition does not consider changes with time, which is a defining feature of flash drought, according to this commenter. And it has a threshold that is too high. It does not require the dry periods to last more than one period, so it, uh, it's too short. Christian et al. 2019 based their criteria on the principles outlined in Otkin et al. 2018. They used a standardized evaporative stress ratio. And about their definition, you said, this approach is scientifically sound and comprehensive. It uses a variable that represents the physical impact of drought, in this case it's evapotranspiration, and a 30-day period is good for representing flash drought. However, on the other, the other hand of this, evapotranspiration and potential evapotranspiration data are not available everywhere, and you'll need to fill in some gaps with either reanalysis data or satellite data. And this definition does not require that drought conditions persist for some period of time beyond the rapid intensification period. Noguera et al. 2020 used three examinations of the SPEI, and for this definition, you said this definition includes both drivers, uh, the SPI, and impacts, evapotranspiration. However, it also does not require that drought conditions persist beyond the rapid intensification period. Four definitions were based on, they, they based the concept of flash drought on the US Drought Monitor each with their own pros and cons, which I won't go into in detail, but in general, mostly the comments received on these centered around the ease of access of the data as a pro and the operational nature of the US Drought Monitor, also a pro. However, there were questions about the period of time that should be considered to define a flash drought. Of the four papers listed here, each used different periods to define a flash drought. One of these U.S. Drought Monitor definitions came from the Pendergrass et al. 2020 paper, which also provided a second definition based on the Evaporative Demand Drought Index. This paper and these two proposed definitions were developed by the attendees of the Aspen Global Change Institute workshop, so AGCI, Aspen Global Change Institute workshop, that took place in September 2018. There were a lot of comments on this particular definition, which I do not have time to go into. Instead, I'm going to jump straight to an analysis that was done by Mike Hobbins, who's attending today. On the left is a count of flash drought events based on the US Drought Monitor definition, which is a two category increase over two weeks and sustained for a further two weeks. On the right is a count of flash drought events based on the eddy definition, which is a 50% increase over two weeks sustained for a further two weeks. These are plotted using the same scale and counted over the same period. The takeaway here is that the two definitions proposed at the AGCI workshop and published in the Pendergrass et al. 2020 uh, paper capture different events altogether. 
Here, the orange circles represent flash drought definitions that consider flash drought to be a short-lived but intense drought event. Most of these papers also acknowledged rapid onset of drought as a key characteristic. The first of these was Hunt et al. 2009. In fact, this was the first paper to use measurable criteria to identify flash drought at all. But notwithstanding that, the most referenced of these was Moe et was Mo and Lettenmeyer 2015 and 2016. Moe and Lettenmeyer provide two flash drought definitions. One is a heat wave flash drought and the other is a precipitation deficit flash drought. Both of these require a flash drought to include a heat wave, which by nature of the phenomena does not persist for more than a few weeks. Six papers began from the Moe and Lettenmeyer definitions and then made some adaptations in their own definitions. Of these, um, uh, of the thoughts submitted on uh, about this type of flash drought definition, there were only criticisms, including these. One, the method identifies identified events that are too short to be a drought. Next, the soil moisture threshold of 40% is too high. A positive evapotranspiration anomaly does not necessarily mean drought stress on plants. The precipitation and evapotranspiration thresholds are too modest to ensure that meaningful impacts are occurring. And as a final note, it was pointed out that the drawbacks mentioned in for the Moe and Lettenmeyer paper were also applied to all of the related definitions. There were four papers that considered short-term drought events and are a little different from the others. Uh, Jan et al. 2018 described flash drought to be a, quote, a type of drought that has a rapid onset and short duration from a few days to one to two months, close quote. They referenced Moe and Lettenmeyer in their lit review paragraph, but not in their formulation of flash drought criteria. Their method, however, was very similar to Moe and Lettenmeyer, and your comments uh, about this definition uh, pointed to the same underlying issues that came up from Moe and Lettenmeyer. The second paper not directly linked to Moe and Lettenmeyer is Zhang et al. 2019. In this paper, a flash drought event is defined when the monthly July or August rainfall is less than 100 millimeters. Your comments, point on, your comments on this definition point to the lack of impacts and the inability for this to be applied beyond one specific climate region. While not using the term flash drought, Lee et al. 2020 referenced other flash drought papers to define what they called a short-term drought, lasting a few weeks or even days, using a standardized antecedent precipitation evapor evapotranspiration index, or the SAPEI. Your comments are that this method does not look at how conditions are changing, which means that there is no guarantee that it is identifying an actual flash drought. Finally, the Lee et al. 2020 paper required that a flash drought be both a rapid onset and a short duration event, and they used measurable criteria for both. You are critical that this region-based metric that this is a region-based metric, which is complicated because by this definition, the flash drought area is allowed to move from one pentad to the next. This literature review also looked at the indices. Sorry, this, it looked at which indices were used in defining flash drought. Soil moisture, evapotranspiration, temperature, and precipitation were used the most. I've highlighted here the drought monitor as it represents a combination of several indices. But to be fair, the ESR, EDI, and SPEI are also combined indices. So when pulling these base elements from these indices and combining them with the counts of other indices, Evapotranspiration becomes the most used indicator of flash drought, showing up in 11 papers. Finally, we looked at which papers used mul multiple indices as, a flash, as a, an indicator of flash drought. I've highlighted these according to the papers that used the drought monitor in red, papers that used one indicator but in multiple ways in yellow, and then everything else. On that last point, an example of this would be uh, combining the total soil moisture with the rate of change of soil moisture to come up with a drought index. So just to conclude, flash drought is a relatively new research term and research on this topic started out fairly slow in 2002, but it has really increased since the 2012 drought. The literature contains a divide between defining flash drought as a rapid onset event or requiring a heat wave, which by nature of the definition means a flash drought 
is a short and intense event. It does not persist. And finally, only people who preferred rapid onset definitions responded to my request for feedback. So I suspect my, I, I have a bit of bias in the results that I showed. While that concludes the literature review, I would like to point out that we composed this review in August and we included all of the papers published up to 31st of July this year. A few of you subsequently pointed me to research on the topic that had been published between then and now. A quick search showed eight new papers, although there may be more. This includes research by some of you who are at today's meeting, which you're welcome to bring up in today's discussion sessions.